do you want truth? You know, how many, how many of us are really seekers after truth? How, how many of us, you know, uh, are, is our life goal to find truth? Our, our society is, in my opinion, gray. And so when you come out with a message that isn't gray, it does stand out. You know, it's not like we live in a black and white society. So, so then I'll ask him, I'll say, all right, well, if you're a good person, have you sinned in the past? Have you done wrong in the past? And they'll generally say yes. They'll say, well, do you think you might do wrong in the future? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm sure I will. Well, then what makes you think that you are good? You see, when I was young, tolerant meant you disagree, but you don't beat the other guy up. That's what tolerant meant. Today, tolerance means everybody's right can't say that somebody else is wrong. And so when somebody like me comes out and says, no, this, this is wrong, and this is right, it is, I mean, to some people, yeah, they don't, they don't like it because, number one, it goes against how they are, as, how we are as a culture, and number two, people don't like to be told that they're wrong, basically, and who does? Respect any man of religion, especially the world preacher who sits out here almost every day preaching to thousands of college students that absolutely hate him and think he's annoying. I really don't know much about him. Um, I've heard that he gives some very insightful, insightful uh, blessings. I think that it's not fair that people don't pay enough attention to him. To be honest, I think the kids should really like you know you're here. You might as well listen to a new opinion, a new point of view. So. I think it's good that he talks about it. Um, it kind of sucks because I can see a lot of people's eyes. Because even sitting there, everyone, as I was just listening, I got the same like judgment glare that I did that they were giving him. And I'm like, you know, you don't know me either. I mean, I think he's just passionate about it, honestly. I, I don't even know what course he teaches. I don't even know if a lot of the students are sim uh, same people I see sitting here a lot. And I don't know if they... You think he's a teacher? I would think so. I graduated high school in 75 and stopped going to college uh, in 79. Um, took a year off between 75 and 76. And you know, we just partied a lot, basically. <laughs> That's what we did and um, you know, I was kind of looking for answers, I was looking for truth and um, I didn't find it there in the party life but I didn't think I was gonna find it in the nine to five life either. I didn't grow up in a religious household. Religion really wasn't a um, wasn't an issue in our home. I was the kind of kid that just kind of did the next thing. You know, what do you do when you get out of seventh grade? You go to eighth grade. What do you do when you get out of eighth grade? Well, you go to ninth grade. I mean, things just—I didn't even think about it because it didn't seem to anything to think about. You just did the next thing. It was all kind of laid out. Then I got to—I think about the summer of my senior year of high school. And all of a sudden, for some reason, it dawned on me that, you know, when I graduate from high school, nothing's laid out anymore. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't the next thing that had to be done. You know, ideally, ideally, we should all be searching for truth our, our entire life. And so if you go down a certain road and you find out that that's not true, then, then you get on the road that is. The society, you know, at, at least, gives us the impression that truth is unknowable, that ultimate truth is unknowable. You know, you know the old saying, the truth is relative. Uh, November 15th, 1982 is when um, I started preaching out here. There was actually somebody out here before me. His name was Bro Cope, and he was influential in my becoming Christian. And so when I became Christian, I used to come out here and kind of hang out and see if I could help him out at all, maybe talk to people or hand out literature or something. And over time, I began to believe that God was calling me to do what he was doing. Oh, yeah, we get donations um, from various sources, a little bit from the church we go to, um, some from individuals. And so if you really want to know what life is about, you have to find out whether or not this God exists. What I've noticed is that most today don't really have a religion that they really believe in, that they really follow. And so, since we have to get our beliefs from somewhere, we tend to get them from the culture. 
So the culture teaches things like all religions are the same. You know, you can't know which religion is the right one. God doesn't care which religion you follow. Um, you know, having sex before marriage is okay. Abortion is okay. Homosexuality is okay. Drunkenness is okay. A lot of these uh, messages that the culture gives, people just adopt as they grow up in the culture. So I try to give reasons why maybe some of these, why to question some of these uh, beliefs that are, that are handed down to us. Premarital sex and drunkenness and abortion and homosexuality and so, for most, those aren't so clear cut. Well then, and you can't really know for sure what's right and wrong on that level. Then we say, well then God can't really hold us accountable on that level. So as long as you're not, not you know, murdering, raping, pillaging, and destroying, you're going to go to heaven. That's how the logic goes. And the logic is sound, but it's based on the idea that you can't know who God is. But, you know, how do you know you can't know who God is? Most, most um, don't care. Um, some, a few, really don't like what I say and really object to it. Um, and then some, some get it, a few. But, but I think the vast majority just have their things that they're doing and they kind of walk by and don't really listen. So, I'm not sure why you need an extra day to try to get laid. It seems like Fridays and Saturdays, you know, the, the normal allotted days for getting laid should be plenty. Most years are pretty consistent with the Thursday, Friday. Thursday's all sinner's eve. Friday is compelled to sin Friday. I think if you really want a challenge at Penn State, it would be to go through your entire Penn State career and not get laid. Protestant Monday, so, and Tuesday is Heaven or Hell Tuesday, and Wednesday is Atheist Wednesday. Even though atheists today will admit that they don't know for sure that there is no God, they act like they know for sure. I'm always like looking for the truth, and, and uh, you know, preachers in general, uh, proselytizers, there's a few of them out here. And, uh, you know, they, they purport to know that truth, and, and that's really what I'm going for. And so, uh, whenever somebody wants to say something that's unknowable to any other human, I'm, I'm really interested to see what their arguments are, to see if it's logical, to see if it works with my worldview, to see if it makes any sense at all. I can't physically touch God, I can't physically talk to God, and actually have to talk back to me and hear it, unless I'm saying, you know, I, I can't hear his voice, I can't see him. Well, the question is, is, if there's a God, would he be capable of making himself known to us in ways that we can be sure? If you don't know whether there's a God or not, you would have to say, God, if you're there, let me know. Or God, I know you're there, but I don't know what the, what the right religion is, so let me know. And God has ways of communicating with us. It's just that we don't believe it anymore. It's like... It's like the answer was right here in front of your eyes all the time. Because we are educated to think in a certain way, we can't come up with the answer. Um, and the answer is, is that God communicates it to us. God reveals it to us. God, re God takes the scales off of our eyes so that we can see. And we as humans have always acted as if objective morality exists. If you don't